introduce the topic of uh, East Jerusalem and the Palestinian religious tourism industry. Uh, as you might know, the Palestinian tourism industry in East Jerusalem faces unique challenges, including Israeli restrictions on new hotels and tourist companies, poor infrastructure, and high taxes. These are in addition to the seasonal nature of Christian and Muslim pilgrimages, the lack of proper coordination, and a common strategy among Palestinians working in tourism, and competition from the Israeli tourism sector. This panel will examine these and other challenges as well as the huge potential for growth. And now it gives me great pleasure to uh, invite uh, Mr. or Dr. Uh, Jad Daniel, uh, who will introduce the panel and move with the program. D yeah. Dr. Daniel. Good afternoon, or even ahead of time, huh? Can't be bad. So when Ratib asked me to uh, moderate this panel, you know, I was thinking about this topic, and two things come to mind. One is the economical importance of tourism for the people, you know, the Palestinians living in Jerusalem. But the other one is it's a way for us to really kind of introduce the world to our heritage in that part of the world and also our ties to the land as, as we deal with a concerted effort to change the history you know, by the Zionists and State of Israel. So I thought this would be a very uh, interesting topic to, uh, to moderate and cover. And we have a panel of uh, two distinguished people here. Uh, I just need to pull it was on my phone and it will be here in a second. Uh, two distinguished people on the panel, Sir Ratib Rabia. I think you all know him. I don't know if I need to do more introductions to Ratib. But I can tell you I've been part of the HCF journey for 20 years, you know, when Ratib, you know, founded it and, uh, or co-founded it. And he started on that journey. And um, I know he has covered, you know, multiple areas in trying to help the Palestinians living in Palestine. And, you know, tourism has been one of them. So. Uh, I believe is well credentialed to, uh, to cover the topic. I'm also pleased to welcome Mr. Marwan Ahmed. Uh, Mr. Ahmed is the founder and president of the Arab American Business Council since 2014. He is the president of Arabesque Media, a Virginia-based digital marketing and publishing company. Mr. Ahmed has a degree in computer information systems and additional education in digital marketing, TV producing, and nonprofit management. He has been in the marketing and publishing business since 1994. He served on a media training mission to Italy and the State Department touring four cities to speak, educate, and train ethnic media. Mr. Ahmed specializes in general marketing, publishing for business in the US, as well as companies that do business in the Middle East. He is also the founder and organizer of Al-Quds Festival. So thank you gentlemen for being here. I will let you decide who goes first. Uh, do you have the presentation? Uh, oh. I uh, been involving in uh, tourism for Palestine for since the inception of uh, SCF where we thought that taking uh, uh, American Christians from churches to go to Palestine because we felt this is the best way to know what's going on without any uh, propaganda uh, we just take them there and uh, uh, they seen the facts, like uh, facts on the ground, seeing is believing, and this is where HCF built the volunteer base on the people who went and visited Palestine and they moved. They moved because it is where uh, uh, find out that the, the Holy Land, the country of peace, uh, Jerusalem, Bethlehem is under occupation, and that's uh, uh, 
uh, felt that, you know, can't be. But again, uh, they remember that 2,000 years ago, Jesus was refugees, and he has to run away to Egypt, and he has to, to come back. And, you know, the same story as the first uh, uh, Christian Palestinian. Again, still that it's continue uh, to be like that. I'm just going to shed some light first on a couple of things about tourism and how we can change that, you know. And um, did I turn it off or I should? Uh, uh, I think I made a mistake here. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm back. Okay. Uh, Jerusalem, as you know, uh, city of peace, holy city, you name it, you know, <coughs> Beit al Maqdis, we call it different, very different names but still it is the holy place. <sighs> Jerusalem, it is for Muslims, Christians, and Jews. We have a, a spiritual attachment to Jerusalem, regardless who we are, because Jerusalem, as we've been talking about it, should be shared by two people and three faiths. Here is uh, the Israeli policies toward Jerusalem. We outline it in three phases. Uh, from the point of view of tourism development and cultural advancements in the city. The development is one thing, integration and uh, genitrification. You know, all these, you know, uh, the three, uh, the three uh, uh, section of, of uh, uh, the challenges, or these three challenges are um, uh, affecting uh, negatively on the people of uh, Jerusalem. Let's talk about first uh, uh, phase is the development, uh, the development. As you know, we, this morning we, we covered a lot about the wall and, um, you know, and separating uh, uh, Jerusalem from the West Bank, where uh, I'm talking about East Jerusalem as the Palestinians are divided you know, who can come to Jerusalem and who cannot, and the wall is, is between them, you know. Uh, they are, you know, this wall is marginalizing the Palestinian uh, 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 presence, you know, urban presence in the city, and uh, in a way that uh, uh, the, it is, has, has done a little to improve, you know, like the government has a little to improve of, of, uh, of uh, uh, East Jerusalem and to protect the businesses or well-being of it is um, residents. You know, this is the, the developments. That means there is no developments. There is no uh, 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 government to plan for East Jerusalem. It is on their own. You know, even it is under, because it's under occupation. Even they say, we wanna, we wanna have, have it as part of Jerusalem then divided, but they are really not taking care of it. And this is where the people, the Palestinians, left alone in, into that. You know, the second one, integration. Uh, 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 what they call it, uh, uh, Israelization, or uh, let me just go to that, of East Jerusalem, or uh, uh, Israelization, maybe this is the best way to, to pronounce it, because Judaization of, of Jerusalem, this is what they are trying uh, to do. They have changed everything, the zoning, the things is becoming, you know, uh, an Israeli uh, city. That's what they are trying to do and to uh, 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 delete the Arab identity in Jerusalem. And this is what they are having, uh, they are doing, you know, into that. Um, was that? Oh, okay. That's what we, 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 we having this problem is where you know, everything, even that, that, that when they decided now it's the Arabic language, is not an official language in Israel, and now they start changing the, the signs. Usually the signs is uh, Arabic, English, and, and uh, Hebrew, but now they are changing it that to Hebrew and English. Is there is a lot of things, you know, they are doing in order to, to, to uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, erase the Arab presence in any way in, in, in and that's the second phase. The third phase is, which is gentrification. That's where they are emptying Jerusalem from the Palestinian people. 
and bring uh, Israelis Jewish to live there, and this is affecting East Jerusalem. Of course, we talk, I don't want to talk much about the um, wall because you know the effect the wall on, 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 uh, uh, on the Palestinians from uh, instability of, of uh, political, uh, uh, political instability, violence, um, low quality life. Uh, um, they are isolating Jerusalem from the West Bank and you see Palestinians are different uh, uh, groups, you know, and you cannot visit Jerusalem unless if you have a permit and, you know, and uh, the people in Jerusalem, they can visit the West Bank, but really they shouldn't, you know, I mean, it's too, too many difficulties and to cross, you know, uh, uh, that, that area, it is unbelievable. It's like, you know, um, my, my, my staff, you know, because they cannot go, they are in Bethlehem and in Berzit. If they want to connect between each other, they cannot go through Jerusalem. They have to go through the Palestinian road, which take one hour and a half to two hours. It depends on the, on the day or, or, or the time. And this is not helpful for, you know, if you want to do to, to tourism. Let's see here about the quality of life in the old uh, uh, city, you know. Unemployment, 12%. This is an old uh, uh, statistics and it's now more and more, you know, by uh, closing shops and, you know, uh, no business, you know, because of that. You know, you know the people are living under uh, the poverty line and still struggling. There is, uh, they are left alone. Even they think, you know, when you talk to somebody from Jerusalem, they say, oh, they are, they are doing well because, uh, you know, it's under the Israeli law. But really, uh, it is the uh, um, cost of living is very high. The income is, is low. And, you know, they, they are hardly making it in, in Jerusalem. And they keep complaining and saying how we can support the Palestinians in, in, uh, in, in, in East Jerusalem. And this is one of the issues, you know. Uh, like I said, you know, um, Israel is pressuring, you know, it is on exclusive land in Jerusalem. They are making it uh, a Jewish city is not, you know, city for all. This is what we have been talking for the last two days and how we can work together to make it for <coughs> all. And this is, this is some of the things we are having. Even the, 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 the maps, the things, you know, it looks like, you know, they want to change all the land, the Palestinian landmark from Jerusalem to look like a completely uh, uh, Jewish city and has nothing to do with the Christians and uh, with, with Muslims, you know. And we are was watching as, as the time is going by and this is very dangerous, you know, to look at Jerusalem and it'll be sad to see it completely uh, out of, of touch as a uh, Palestinian city. Of course, all of that affecting the tourism to Jerusalem. Uh, what is and like we say, the, the, you know, in the Gulf area, the Arab Gulf area is, is the oil is where they make their money and where their economy depends on. In, in Palestine, it is the tourism because this is where uh, uh, Israel taking uh, uh, the benefit out of it. More than 80% is, is covered by the Israelis, even if they uh, 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 bring people to Bethlehem. You know, they say, oh, Bethlehem is full of tourists but nobody spends money, you know, because they bring them in, they put them in the hotels, and uh, they charge them only, you know, they pay the hotel owners uh, maybe $20, $22 per person per, per night, and maybe they are charging $100 for each, you know. They cannot let them go shopping in, 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 in uh, Bethlehem, and this is, you know, affecting the stores, you know. It, it, it is, it is, it is just the same thing, you know, there are, uh, there are uh, many uh, hotels are closing, uh, you don't have, you don't have that development of, of hotels in order to absorb uh, people coming, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, sad, you know, this is where we look at it, 
you know, talking about political issues, but this is where we need to give them support. As we say, we need, you know, somebody say, what about Gaza? Yes, it's Gaza, Jerusalem, West Bank. We are all suffering, you know I mean? You know, in, <coughs> in different ways, we are all suffering, you know. Um, what could be done about that? This is where at HCF we're trying to bring people and put them in Bethlehem, pay, you know, the, the hotels what they deserve to be paid, and we take them on, on a trip to go journey besides Jerusalem and Bethlehem. We take them to Ramallah, to Berzet, to, to Sebastia, to Jenin, Nablus, and from there we go to uh, Nazareth, you know, to show them the Palestinian towns and cities and, and uh, break the bread, as we say in Christians, and I'm sure the Muslims think, you know, to eat together, you know, to understand it. I take them to Berzet. Now again, Berzit has another good uh, as a destination for tourism. And this is, you know, I'm not biased, but this is really what's happening. When we take them, as you've seen in the, in, the, in, the, in the video, that we take them to the social developments and cultural center, and they eat with them, and they dance with them, and they have fun with them, and they see the real Palestinian people because they, it's not a touristic area. They don't ask them, you know, uh, if you are in Bethlehem, uh, uh, sell for me some crafts or, you know, uh, help me. Uh, no, people in Berzet tell them the story. Tell the people when you go back what's going, us with us, what's going on with us. We are here and we are suffering. We are maintaining, you know, the, 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 the presence of, of, of the people here. And especially for, we are addressing the Christians more. Here we are. We are going to be staying here. We've been here 2,000 years and we're going to stay another 2,000 years. We are not, you know, we are going to keep uh, 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 stand fit uh, in, in, in Berzit, and we are going to be in Palestine regardless what you are going to do for us. And this is a message where a lot of people, I'm sure <coughs> some of you here will, will have comments been with us and they, 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 to talk about the highlight of, of, of uh, here's some statistics, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, whatever I say, you know, it doesn't mean anything except I'm telling you it's going down, it's not helpful. You know, these, these charts, this is the, the number of rooms of hotels going down, the income is, is coming down. You know, it is really needs somebody to pay attention for it. In the Palestinian territories, we don't have a proper uh, 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 tourism, board of tourism, because of the situation. Uh, and that's, that's, if we fix this problem about tourism and start focusing on it, we'll have a good income. Uh, to the Palestinians, but still this is not worked out because we don't have the system. We have families, have hotels, have restaurants, but we don't have the marketing plan for, for tourism in Palestine. Regardless of whatever I say, we have two million people coming to Bethlehem, coming uh, a lot, uh, more millions to East Jerusalem, but there is no money, there is no income. They just come and go. You know, how we can make them, you know, uh, uh, be uh, 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 staying there, spend money, understand the situation. The only thing we get about, uh, about uh, tourism or tourists to go there, or pilgrims we call them, is to know the real story about the Palestinians. Because wherever they go, they hear the story of the Palestinians. But this is where we need <coughs> to encourage uh, uh, not only Americans or churches now, we have, if you, if you recall, that we have uh, uh, the Northern Heritage Program. This is what starts for the Palestinian young people. Now we are organizing the trips for the Palestinians who are uprooted, who don't have families uh, in, in Palestine. And that's to come and visit because a lot of them, the older generation, they want to go there, but they ha don't know how to do it. And now we're organizing these trips to take them to every uh, city in, in, in most of the main cities, let me put it, and uh, in, in Palestine, and let them visit and see because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always hear that forget about the Palestinian too because they have a role to play. They say, forget about Palestine. We lost it. We don't have any, anything there. No, you know. But when uh, when uh, or some of our uh, elders, they say, uh, I want uh, to go when is Palestine liberated. How can I liberate Palestine if you don't know what is Palestine? And this is what I'm asking them to come and visit and see. 
Is that correct, yeah, Najihat? Najihat is working with me on, on this uh, project, and she's going to be with us, you know, to, to encourage them. Um, you know, decline in everything. You know, just want to leave some uh, question and answers after uh, Burwan finish because maybe that will cover a lot of things. But this is the, the, the full pictures, you know, you know, uh, in order to do uh, uh, some uh, 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 opportunities, we need to do a few things, preserve our Palestinian culture, identity, and existing existence in East Jerusalem. What we, what we did, I just came back from uh, BYU in Utah, and I put a museum there about the Palestinian heritage and culture to see that we are not terrorists, we are also, we have heritage and culture. You know, that's what we know. Um, um, I don't want to argue with you about what you talk about us, but I want to show you the, our good side. And you'll find out we are not as, as, you, as you talk to, uh, as you, you call us terrorists. You know, we need to do more plans with East Jerusalem. You know, we need to, 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 to empower it in order to keep it. We cannot just keep watching and talking, with the, waiting for the political solution for it. It's not going to work this way. It has to go hand in hand. We have to have, I'm talking business-wise, but tourism is very important to work that as it's our topic. Capacity building of both individual businesses and organizations. This is important. You know, we cannot just, we keep focusing, you know, because the Israelis, of course, we have challenges with the Israelis. They don't give you permits uh, to build. They don't let you uh, do the business as you wish. And, you know, too many uh, hardship for, for all of that. But this is the only way we have to keep resisting by opening businesses, supporting businesses, capacity building in, in East Jerusalem. Um, there is two, you know, uh, the, the, the people there, you know, the, the youth are lost there, you know, and needs, needs some training, leadership, and, and other things. Uh, there is a lot of uh, 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 things you could do with, with the people, you know. This is, this is very important that uh, to work with them in the business, in the art, in the culture, to rebuild, to revive, you know, a lot of things in Jerusalem because if you've been in Jerusalem before, you see it has a lot of things to offer. But the people, the Palestinian in East Jerusalem, cannot do it by themselves. And this is where the message to go. You know, if you are a Christian and you want to keep Jerusalem is for Christians, you need to involve. It's not good just to look at it as, you know, okay, will be solved later or we, 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 it, it's going to be fixed by itself. No, we need all to put our heads together in order to uh, 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 build it. Again, here is the, the promotion. We need to promote it. You know, we are, uh, we promote the Palestinian uh, tourism, but we don't have a proper uh, marketing plans or promotional plans because we have people comes from uh, uh, Pal Palestine. They want to promote uh, uh, the tourism. They don't market Palestine. They market, uh, they do sales. They do their own business, and which this is not helpful. First, you need to market Palestine, regardless who you go with, because that's benefit Palestine and benefit <coughs> East Jerusalem. First, we need to do the promotion, you know, marketing. It is, you know, uh, it is in, in college, you take one-on-one, -on -one, you know, this is how you do it. You market it, then you sell. You know, you have to know the products before you buy it. And we don't do that. You know, and this is where we need to do more of that and need to, the international uh, agencies to, uh, to work on this. And I work with the WTO, you know, the World Tourism Organization. And we have a conference in Bethlehem about, about how can promote it. And then we have, uh, we brought them here to Washington in order to help us in how we can market it. But uh, it is very difficult because this is a big thing for an organization. It needs governments. It needs people to work on it in order to promote and market Palestine as destination for tourism. Um, that's where, uh, you know, still important tourism points here. Uh, the opportunities are there, and um, the Palestinian uh, uh, has challenges, but uh, I think uh, uh, dealing with Palestinians, you enjoy their heritage and culture. They are very generous people, and they like you, and they will work with you. 
you know, as, as, as uh, uh, people, you know, but we need uh, the international arena beside, like FIDA is ambassador at United Nations working on the political issues. I wish I have here in, in Washington on that somebody work on tourism, just marketing tourism and to focus on tourism because this is our, our oil in Palestine. This is how we can make peace. People will understand it. All my volunteers, you know, around the country, we have up to different capacity, over 500 uh, uh, volunteers, but these are all because they found out what's going on. They have no clue when they came back and they are fully, you know, uh, aware of Palestine and they wanna help. They wanna help from the heart, not because, you know, they wanna do business for the Palestinians because this is the only way to understand on all level, business and politics. And we are asking, you know, uh, uh, all, international agencies, governments, and uh, uh, all, all the good people in, in the world to come forward. It is fun to involve in tourism and to go to the Holy Land and we can hold your hands and we can uh, uh, pray together and you know, we can break the bread together and do everything we can do together and come back and build uh, 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 the tourism in Palestine. I'll stop here, I'll leave it till later for more questions. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Thank you, Ratib. Uh, I all on board with Ratib and his message about tourism, it is very, uh, important to us and it's a critical it is it is our oil in Palestine this is how we can make a wealthy society you know based on tourism Not yet. no I don't want to be famous now. <laughs> so um, so basically uh, my name is Marwan Ahmed uh, thank you for the bio introduction earlier um, Last one, one. I'm, yes. uh, not right. we'll change has yeah. now so salamu alaikum uh, Hello, buongiorno, como estas? <laughs> you cannot talk about tourism without speaking different languages, right? And I don't speak any of these, except <laughs> English and some Arabic or Arabic. Um, I got involved in tourism uh, passion uh, just last year. And uh, I visited Palestine uh, in 2008. And uh, since then I discovered by visiting how much it is lacking in educational tourism. So I decided to invite or encourage all my friends since that point on to visit Palestine for merely economic reasons. Because I realized by visiting Palestine through tourism, we can support the hotels, the shops, the taxi driver, and the restaurants. And everything else would decimate from there into the society. This is a very critical way of resistance, economic resistance making the people of Palestine steadfast through economy, economy. Not through politics, not through protest, not through angry mobs or any of that. It is through economic empowerment. And tourism is a perfect tool to do this. And it's about time that we take a lead in this. The Israelis have captured and monopolized this industry for many, many years. And we're just sitting and watching. And it's a no brainer. Just take people to Palestine. And these people will spend money, and this money will go to the society, and the society will become more educated, more stronger, and will aspire to do better things. <coughs> so I decided to put more effort into tourism as a business, not just as a nonprofit, because business will feed business. Nonprofit has charities, has its goal, it has its 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 uh, uh, goals that will help certain you know, segments of society, but we need to support business. That's the bottom line. So the status of, of uh, tourism in Jerusalem today is very poor. And when I talk about poor, I am emphasizing Islamic tourism because there are, there are Jewish tourism, there's a lot of Christian tourism. Unfortunately, even the Christian tourism is one-sided and I'm leaving it for Ratib and his organization to fix that. My side, I wanna emphasize on Islamic tourism. Muslims have not been to Jerusalem, have not to, been to Palestine in the last decades. And it, it is sad, it's a sad situation that we have not. 
So I wanted to go out and invite American Muslim community and anybody else, this is not restricted to Muslims, anybody else who wanna come, visit Jerusalem. Because we wanted to empower the businesses of Jerusalem through tourism. The challenges are, number one, I mentioned already, the monopoly that Israel has on the tourism. They control this industry. But again, you know, they don't stop people from visiting, so why not you know, take steps, be pioneers in this area as well. The other challenge in tourism is the lack of outside agents. Travel agencies outside Palestine, especially in the West, do not have programs to promote, to tell people, would you like to visit Palestine? Would you like to visit Jerusalem? I have links, I have connections, I can hook you up, I can have, I have packages for you, I have tour guides, I have hotels, I have everything you need to enjoy a trip to Jerusalem for whatever reason you wanna go for. The other challenge is fear. People are just scared from going to Palestine or Jerusalem. They think they'll be stopped, they'll be questioned, maybe deported because they have been in one protest you know, during their lifetime, these things, 99%, 99.9% don't happen. And the, the, the fraction of a percentage that this happens is to few people, so what? We will take the chance. I'm an activist, I've never been stopped visiting Palestine. Now, what are the services that we can empower in Palestine? There are Palestinian-owned hotels in Jerusalem inside the old city and outside the old city. I don't have exact number, but I will give you a guide that will, will show you the, the numbers based on, on what the research they have done. These hotels, they, are, they start from two-star hotel to maybe four-star hotel. They're not a Western style, style hotels, but they're very accommodating, very friendly, and they will do everything they can to make your stay very pleasant. I visited some of these hotels. I talked to the owners and I talked to managers and I've seen how much they, they're, they're hungry for us to visit them. They were so excited when I talked to them and I said, I'm thinking to bring in a, a tour and a group to, to Jerusalem next summer, 2019. They're like, finally, it's about time. We get people here and there, but we don't have groups. We don't have any organized effort and we're looking for people like you. And I'm hoping that whatever I do, will be copied, and I will see more competitors trying to do the same thing, even if, even if it's for a business reason. It doesn't have to be just for nonprofit or for no, no just for uh, a moral reason, but also for business. So hotels, um, transportation, a lot of you know, drivers, whether bus or taxi drivers are Palestinians in Jerusalem and they will definitely benefit by using their services. Uh, uh, restaurants, uh, tour guides, there's a whole industry that could be employed through tourism. And as I said, there are many other industries linked to it. Why do people visit Jerusalem? Some, uh, most people think of Jerusalem as a religious place. Yes, they go, they go for religious reasons. Whether Muslims, Christian, Jews, they go to visit their holy sites. But there are other aspects of, of, of uh, traveling to Jerusalem. Leisure, it's a beautiful city. Shopping, there's all kinds of shops, handmade crafts, you know, you name it, everything is available. And at very reasonable and affordable prices. And the last one is, is youth tourism. And uh, Ratib is a pioneer in that. He started this many years ago and he's taken youth groups to, to Palestine and Jerusalem and he's very good at it. And we will need more people to do the same thing. Not to compete with Ratib, but just, just think of taking youth because that's how you, you plant the seed in these people. And the young people who will remember. And I remember, May, you mentioned yesterday your first trip and how it changed you, right? We need a lot of Mays to go. We need hundreds and thousands. We need a new Palestinian birthright to go to Palestine and Jerusalem especially because it's beyond just a religious reason. This will reconnect them with their heritage. Well, you know, we take uh, young people and young at heart. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so all ages, right? All ages, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm personally passionate about um, maps. 
and mapping cities. And I study the maps carefully. I'm not a scientist in, in that field in any way or form. But when I go to a place, I look for maps. And that's how much it tells me about the city and, and the diversity of the city and the services of the city. So when I went to Jerusalem this summer, I asked, where are the maps? And it took me a long time to find maps that represent our side. Believe it or not, they do exist. But it took me about two and a half to three weeks to find a map. They're available, but they're hidden, they're put in drawers, and they're not shared, and I don't understand why. And I found a few. So, uh, one of the maps uh, is this one here. Has a lot of good information, but it could be improved. It's a good start. Graphically, it could be improved. The information is wealthy. We just have to improve on it. So I talked to these people to see how we can work on that. This map, I found actually a guide. It's a very wealth, wealthy guide of information, and it has a map also of Jerusalem. And it, it highlights the Islamic sites in Jerusalem, Al-Quds, Al-Aqsa, and the surrounding areas. Well, guess where I found it? I found it at Al-Aqsa Mosque Library. And I had to go through loopholes to find this map. From a guard to guard to guard to guard who took me at the end to the library, introduced me to the, to the library manager who opened his drawer and he pulled this out and he said, this is my last copy. <laughs> Believe it or not. And, and it's very, very well put together, except it's not being delivered to people, to tourists, to people who visit. People don't know, don't know about it unless you ask, but you have to ask like five people before you find it, which is sad, actually. And this is produced by, actually, the... Uh, Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. They actually produce it. But if it's not dis distributed, what's the point? Very good work, but it's, it's not distributed. And we need to help them do that. This should be at every shop, at every gate, and every door of Jerusalem. Not because it's about Islamic sites, but it's because it's the history and the information it has. To my surprise, I found a very good resource also by also digging, going online, and asking questions, and asking people who introduced me to people, introduced me to people, until I find what I need. And also took me weeks to do that. And I had to spend five weeks in Jerusalem to find some of these resources. And I know there is a lot more than that. If I dig a little bit more, I can find. So I met this organization called the Grassroots Jerusalem. I don't know how many people are familiar with it. Uh, and they produce this beautiful, beautiful guide. It has a lot of historical information, Islamic, Christian, uh, about local organizations, about uh, everything that has to do with the old city and its surrounding. A lot of resources, a lot of research has been you know, put into this. And this is, I think, the second or third edition. And now they're working on 2019. Along with this guide, they produce a map. Another beautiful map. A lot of resources. Yet, it's not at every shop in Jerusalem. This map is the wealth, a true wealth of information about Jerusalem. And, and every resource and information you can think about from our perspective, not the other side's perspective. Why isn't this map at every sh corner in Jerusalem, given to every tourist at every hotel, every bus driver, everybody who walks the street should have uh, this map? So they can look at it and learn. And I met these people. I went to their office, and we chatted, and I told them what I'm planning to do. And they were very excited. And the good news is they are actually now, they have a digital copy of this map on their website. And they're developing an app <coughs> where you can download it in your phone, and you can find all these uh, resources and locations and anything you need through an app with a simple search. So. I have a question for you. How many of you have been to Jerusalem in the past? Very good. How many of you have been to Jerusalem in the last five years? Excellent. So I would say half of the people here. We need to take all of you to Jerusalem. We need to take your friends to Jerusalem. We need to take your neighbors to Jerusalem, your co-workers to Jerusalem. Because everybody loves Jerusalem. But they don't know how to start, where to start. And they end up at the travel agency, agency who will guide them to 
an Israeli tour guide that will tell their story. Good for them. More power. They're doing their job. We're not. It's about time that we take initiative. And we cannot do this initiative individually, me and Ratib. This initiative has to come through every one of you. I talk to everybody I meet, Muslim, Christian, Jew, whatever, and I say, have you been to Jerusalem? And of course, most of the time they say no. And I say, okay, what if I take you to Jerusalem? Yes, I want to do business out of it, but that's not the only reason. I want to narrate my own story through the trip, not the other side story. So I'm going to end with quick pictures of my last trip. Uh, hopefully you enjoy them as much as I did. You could be there yourself next time. So uh, I'm going to comment on a few of them as we go. This one? So, of course, everybody who gets to Jerusalem as a Muslim gets excited about Dome of the Rock. First thing I did, I stood there and I took a, a selfie and I sent it to everybody I know on Facebook and everything. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, it's just exciting and, and it's, it's an uh, icon, it's a landmark. Uh, and I think everybody recognizes this Dome of the Rock. Even Israel uses this icon in their tourism uh, guides. <laughs> if I push harder, would it go? <laughs> okay. All right. So this is a panoramic picture of the inside of the Dome of the Rock. It's a beautiful architecture, of course, uh, very old, and it is mesmerizing, actually. This is a night picture of the Dome of the Rock. I did a little bit touch-ups on it just to make it look uh, fancier. Uh, this is an event in Ramallah, actually, that was organized by the Ramallah Federation uh, this last summer. And uh, they had a Debka group. It was a lot of fun, actually. Uh, and, that's, and they actually, I think, brought 1,200 people, mostly youth, from the U.S. to this event, a conference. And that's what we need. Uh, this is a site in northern Palestine. It's called Ayn al -Sukhna. It's a beautiful tourist attraction. And it's like you're, you're not even in the Middle East. You're somewhere else. It's beautiful weather, swimming place. Of course, there are beaches in Palestine as well. Uh, this is a picture uh, outside the, the gates of Jerusalem entering the Christian uh, quarter. This is the Christian quarter, I think. Beautiful site, beautiful place. A lot of shops, a lot of restaurants. Uh, this is inside the church of the Holy Sepulchre, I think. This is inside the uh, uh, mosque of Omar. It's a small mosque in, in Jerusalem. Hardly anybody visited it. I mean, we went to pray there, and just were five, four, five, four people there. It's, it's really sad, you know. This should be full of tourists, you know. But can you go there if you're not Muslim? Yes, yes. You yes. can't go to the Dome of the Rock. Yes, you can, actually. Not inside. There are designated times that you can go. And that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Now they have actually scheduled designated times for tourists to go to the to the Dome of the Rock. I don't know about uh, not, the not maybe not the mosque, but Dome of the Rock. I think you can. Yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll work on that. <laughs> Believe me, I will. Uh, this is the famous uh, uh, declaration of Omar bin Khattab when he allowed uh, he he did not allow the Muslims to pray in the Christian sites in Jerusalem to preserve them. Uh, this picture is taken from the top of a hotel in, in, uh, in Jerusalem. This hotel is, is I think, is a four-star hotel. No, no, it's, it is, uh, I can't remember the name, but you can easily miss it by walking into the, into the alleys of Jerusalem. But when you go in, it's really all marble inside, very well furnished, has this rooftop where you can sit and have coffee or tea and enjoy the, the scenery. This is the inside of the hotel. I'm not promoting it, by the way, but this is just one, one of the, I'm not even saying the name. But I'm, this, is, this is what the services you're gonna get in Palestine, in Jerusalem. I think this is the uh, Mount of Olives. Yes. This, I took this picture from the top of the uh, uh, 
the wall, yeah, from inside the, the Dome of the Rock wall. The famous Zatar, that when you walk in the, in the alleys of Jerusalem, uh, old, Jeru old city, you will see it there. This guy is on the phone, of course. <laughs> right. It's probably on Facebook. Uh, Damascus, the famous Damascus Gate. And you see now they have new posts for the soldiers. They built one for them. Yeah. They used to hang out in the past. Now they have a stationed post. And that's how intimidating they are becoming. This is the inside of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And I'm going to go back one step here. And this is another sad reality. Time? Okay, you said three hours. Yeah, <laughs> you know, after, after hours. Uh, the sad reality is Muslims are not going to Jerusalem, period. And when, when I go to the, the Al-Aqsa Mosque and there are four rows praying, this is sad. This should be outflowing to the outside of the mosque. That's what the third holiest site in Islam should look like. And we need to change this for, again, business and tourist reasons, not just for religious <laughs> reasons. And when I take a tour, I'm going to take the Muslims to the Christian sites, too. And I'm going to walk them through the, the Jewish quarter and the Armenian quarter as well. To me, this is about educating people and introducing them and, and, and show them the beauty of the place from all perspectives. This is the uh, Armenian uh, side. Yes. Yes. And uh, Yaffa. Bethlehem, beautiful you know, church. Al Khalil, of course, military post around the Abrahamic uh, mosque. A total uh, you know, military post. And of course, you cannot go to Jerusalem without Arsus, the famous drink uh, in Jerusalem. So thank you very much for listening. I'll take any questions. I'm sure Ratib have also. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, I usually don't don't bring questions or comments, but I was very um, identified by your vision. And I remember when I came back from my KTH trip, the most precious thing I brought was a ninety, almost eighty nine pound uh, bag. And all of the things that I bought, the souvenirs, they were not important. Probably the, the two most important things was a huge map with all the roads uh, of Bethlehem. And I remember we got it at a, at a very Palestinian place and they also had to, you know, they handed it up to us. And, and most of my, of my delegate uh, friends, they left those because they wouldn't fit in their bags. I found a way because my dad's very creative and, and you know, kind of folded the edges and I still have it. And I, yesterday we talked about art and we, today, through your photos, that, that is itself a, a way of art. Uh, my comment is oriented towards, it's not a question because I'm a thinker, not a, you know, door. Um, long story short, Sir uh, <laughs> the The fact that a Palestinian is banned from very sacred Palestinian sites, it's a statement. It's a truth statement. And truth has its own voice. So the fact that they cannot visit these sites on a daily basis should be marketed as such, as a, as a reality. And the world needs to see that this is what's happening. Um, why should people consume this? Because it's the truth. And the more we go on applications or online places and we do virtual tours or we do things with a, with a double message saying, you know, this is what a Palestinian doesn't get to see every day, I think the, the broader audience we're going to get in terms of them seeing it for themselves. Because it would be lovely if we could all go to Jerusalem, but that, you know, I even fear that the next time around I, I try to go in Palestine, they would not let me in because some of my fellow delegates had been denied that right. So my, my, my comment or my question is, what would it take for a digital movement, a tourism digital movement, 
to be put in place. Because the first thing I did when I came back from Palestine, I went on my I iPhone and I tried to look for all the Palestinian applications there were, and there were not many. But they're very valuable. And maps tell stories, photographs tell stories. How can we make this a, instead of paper-based movement, a digital-based movement? I want to say something before, you know, we are talking about when people are already there. This is easy to solve and we'll put maps all over. But we need the maps are here. We need to get the people there first, you know, because there are a lot of maps. Every travel agencies, if you go with them, they give you maps. The maps are there, you know. How? We don't have the system. We need people to go there. This is what I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about. We need maps here in order to encourage them to go there. If they are there, whatever you do is beautiful, with map or without maps. You know, let's work on something, you know, how, how to get you there. So um, I think you had two issues. You, you raised two issues. One is, is the um, not being able to enter uh, holy sites. And I'll tell you a story about that. Uh, my son and I were walking toward the uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque to pray uh, evening prayer. And they stopped him. He's 23. And they asked him, are you a Muslim? He said, yes. Like, he's like, uh, okay, read Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha is the uh, opening of the Quran. He's like, I'm not going to read the Fatiha. This is not kindergarten. He's like, well, we can't get in if, you cannot read, if you're not going to read the Fatiha. So I intervened and I said, what's the point? If you want to see his ID, his last name is Ahmed, and that most likely means he's Muslim. He's like, nope, he has to read the Fatiha. So it's like, you know, uh, talking, talking down at, at us. So we refused, and he brought his supervisor, and we made the fuss out of it, but they wouldn't let us in. We had to walk around and go through a different gate. It's just a method of in, in, in intimidating, basically. Uh, now, to address the digital maps, I totally agree with you. We can, uh, we have to distribute these maps and the, the, the resources in them through digital media, through social media, uh, websites, uh, sharing, using all the latest technology, and it's available. It's a matter of sharing this technology. Uh, there is a gentleman here in Virginia that developed an app also. For, for also for for uh, sites around the, around Jerusalem, but he came up to me and said, "I worked three years on this. I spent ten thousand dollars developing it, but I cannot market it." So we sat and, and discussed it, and we I gave him some tips into how how to do that. Uh, I have a very short question: How well the tour guides? are trained and how knowledgeable are they? Or they are just like a homegrown uh, business or there is a special training for them. Plus, I've been told that the, the Israeli guys, like they kind of change the truth and the history when they take, uh, you know, foreign groups. So what's your answer to that? From my experience that they are well trained but few of uh, guards or uh, uh, tour guides. The thing here is they are well trained, but we need more of them. And if you have Christian groups, you have to ask for a Christian uh, guide. If you have Muslims, you have to ask for Muslims. Otherwise, yes, they, they will rewrite your Christian history if you have if we are with a Jewish guide. Because they have that experience when you go for the Orthodox, which is known the Orthodox here. If you go to the Holy Sepulchre, it is the most sacred place for the Orthodox. And the guy took these uh, uh, people over there to the Holy Sepulchre. They were cleaning it because between time time and they were closing the doors. And the guy told them, uh, told the priest, the Orthodox priest, hey, you know, nothing important here. Let's go somewhere else. And they just went banana. I mean, you know, you well, cannot. That's my point. But your point, ma but that's why you need to fight for more Christian guides for Muslim guides, you know, because we don't have enough. But if you ask for whatever guide in any language you'll find, it depends on the season, of course. Second thing, they are experts in uh, uh, archaeology or, you know, in history or what you want. You have different type of, some of them, they have PhD even, and that's what they do, you know, beside what, what other work they do. Uh, 
just the problem is a lot of guides in Bethlehem, but they cannot go to Jerusalem or to Israel. This is a problem. It's not on how, how, how we can get them. I, I agree okay. with, with Ratib, what he said about uh, they're knowledgeable, but they're few. Uh, but there's another problem with tour guides. It's not only the knowledge. When the, when the Israeli side take you to the, to, to the old city, they, they kind of prevent uh, tourists from buying things at Palestinian stores. They kind of rush them quickly to the, the shops and they just take a quick tour. And I'm going to take you to another place that's cheaper, has better quality, and they, they kind of put them in the corner to push them to go by from their side, not the Palestinian, which impacts the economical situation of these shops. Uh, thank you both, uh, Ratib, and I'm, I'm over here. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you both for the presentation. Just two quick questions. One of them, uh, if I don't know, uh, maybe people in here uh, watching TV on commercials, recently I've seen uh, the Jerusalem Israel um, commercial where they're trying to promote it you know, as, as Israel. Um, what would it take for us to do something, obviously maybe not a commercial, but similar things where we put it out there uh, in the mainstream? And then second of all, what about the, uh, the issue of the Google Maps? I, I believe they've um, distorted names and stuff, right? All, all the names of the places on the website, they're not correct. Yeah, so. And all of those are, are primarily federal-owned railroads. Is that correct? Let's uh, answer his question. Uh, you know, the only problem now, I would like to focus on tourism. We don't want to go back to Stelma. There is a lot of problems. I want to see how... That, that's something else. I'm, I agree with you. You know, there is our, they change the whole all names. You know, I'm, I'm not here, you know, for settlements, walls. We need to see the, the positive, the hope, the good things, you know. Sorry, Julia. You and I, you know, always <laughs> on that level. No, yeah. I know. No, it's not. It's, uh, we're saying the same thing. I'm not arguing yes. that at all. Um, can I ask Just come the to the microphone. A question about the map. Steve first. Yeah. Um, um, excuse me. Let me just address the question about the map quickly. I mean, the, the promotion. It's very easy. You don't have to be on TV. YouTube advertisement is the cheapest in, in Google advertisement. It's the cheapest per click. And if people watch the, the commercial before the video and they don't click on it, you don't pay anything. It's not expensive. But you need, like Katib said earlier, you need a campaign. You need a marketing plan. But also some budget. I'm not saying zero budget, but it could be done on, on a reasonable budget. Not millions, but it's, it's doable. It YouTube needs, is the answer to what you're saying. It needs government and institutional uh, funding for marketing. We cannot just be naive about, you know, to do Thank that you. as the Israelis do. When there's the low, low seasons, the Israelis, they have the Al Al uh, Airlines, they go for $1,000 for, for a week, <laughs> uh, include everything, because when you go there, they take your money on, on the other ways. We don't have that plans. Ratab, I'm going to come at this. I'm not, I don't know anything about the tourism industry other than when I'm a tourist. And the kind of things I look for, and I think people like me who are middle class and have some resources that can travel other than to family funerals, um, are one, is it a special place or a unique place? We don't have to talk about that. This is special and unique. It's got the Christian sites. It's got the Muslim sites. It's got... It's got that knocked, all right? Secondly, uh, is it a place that's going to be safe and with little to no hassles? The safety thing is a perception thing right now with most of the people in the world. Yes, it's a misperception, but it's a perception that enters into the decision to travel somewhere. Some great island locations or Mexico can't go there now. Or it's not safe now, right? Uh, can't go to Cambodia. Uh, the third one is how accessible and easy is it to get around. Um, so <coughs> we almost know too much on that. The unsuspecting tourist probably doesn't know anything about it. We know about the checkpoints and, ha and I hear about all the stuff that's being shared here about the hassles. Um, and I think lastly it gets to the issue, is it affordable and all that. My sense, it is affordable. But going back to your point, and that is the issue of what does it take to build a tourist sector. I, I just think 
you can do it by word of mouth, taking a small group, organizing it through a church. That works very well. But what I was hearing from you is a different vision for tourism where it becomes, it's actually almost too busy there. It's, it's so successful. You see tourists there, like if you go to a major tourist yeah. area. And I, I think that you're going to have to be able to put the word out. You say Chamber of Commerce is not strong there on this. They don't have. No, don't have it. Government. We don't no. have it. See, the people you're competing against, whether it's for travel to Palestine, which I guess then it's the, is Israel, or some other place, they do have this. So there's going to have to be more out there, and it's going to have to address those areas as a tourist that I just told you about. I can Eventually, that, yes. word of mouth. But if you're building a whole sector, you know, is it unique? You've got to really build the uniqueness because it it's like Machu Picchu, except it's more unique. And in and, and other areas, you have to address those very uh, directly and get it in front of people. And then I think there, there starts to be a chance. Let me just answer your question yeah. about security. Not the Israelis or the Palestinians like to see anything happening to the tourism because more they get benefit out of it. Never have any tourists for too many years been hurt or some, something happening unless if you uh, uh, yourself uh, fell down on stairs or something. But for security, it's not. This is for, for, for sure. The other thing is that uh, uh, we have the business for the Holy Land, and uh, it is there, you know, Israel, Palestine, a lot of tourists. But how we can bring them through the Palestinian tourism? This is the question. It's not how many people we need there. They are full. The hotels are full. Now, if you want to go around Easter, there is no room, you know. It's just how we can tell them, go with the Palestinian uh, tourism. This is what we need to promote it. We cannot promote it, you know, uh, bits and pieces. There is other way to penetrate that, which I, I'm trying, and it's very hard, but it needs the clergy. Like, I'm, I, I agreed with the Lutheran uh, bishop that's to try to do the Lutheran uh, uh, tourism. I, I, with the Latin, the same thing, is how we can go directly to churches. We, we have to avoid the travel agents because our travel agents in Palestine, they can do all the arrangements for us. Directly to churches, a different strategy than going on television to appeal to tourists in general. And I do think you have one more special appeal beyond historic and religious. It's a human ecology and justice right. track. Right. And that's going to appeal with these righties like me right. who've got a little bit of time, a little bit of money, and they recognize that this is a cause like South Africa or something else. I think that, that, that those are all fruitful, but I don't think you're going to see the big you know, the big bazooka play at come to Hawaii, come to Bermuda. It won't, it won't, won't be one of those kinds of deals. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, just very quick, the, I've been three times, and the only time I haven't felt safe is when I'm around Israeli soldiers. Yeah. So, <laughs> 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 Truly, I mean, I've always felt safe, and we always stay in Palestinian hotels. But in, in answer to your thing about Google Maps and tourism, while the uh, professor was speaking, I just went to my Google Maps and tried to look up Beardsite University, does not appear. It cannot be found on my phone app. As a tourism issue, it's, that's huge. I mean, it, it's just not there. <laughs> I think the Palestinian tourism needs some help, needs to change the strategy, and needs to, you know, some money have to be spent on, on promoting tourism and market it, not to sell it. and. Uh, our travel agents too, they are not really helping a lot in, in, in promoting our, our tourism, they are promoting their business. And this is two different things, you know, this is my opinion. Um, the, I think the key word now in, in tourism to Palestine is alternative tourism. And uh, I may disagree a little bit with the Ratib here. The name of the game is, is business and money. If we go to travel agents and give them a good package with good incentive, they will promote it better than the other side. Because they want to benefit. End of the day, they want to make money. So we have to give them a package where they make the most out of it, or a little bit more than the other side. And believe it or not, they will start pushing. And they will push hard. And within our community, there are hundreds of travel agents around the country who will do this for us. No, I've been trying. This is, you cannot compete with the Israeli agents and give them packages. You cannot. <laughs> I, I know. I believe that. But that's
that uh, all the Asians, they, they, the Israelis give good, uh, good no, packages. They the Palestinians don't built. have the good packages. Okay, okay. I think. I I um, just one thing about the, um, the Grassroots Jerusalem, which is um, um, grassrootsalquds.net. Uh, Do they not also provide um, uh, locations of literally uh, two or three hundred um, Palestinian organizations that are doing things, um, every kind of thing. And uh, so depending on what your, your particular interests are, you go, hey, that would be great, you know, go over to this neighborhood, knock on the door, and meet some of the people who are really making Jerusalem, you know, stay alive. So that, that's something that can be done through them? Absolutely, and that's why I'm talking to this organization. And they do have, yeah, like you said, all these organizations listed uh, on their map and in their guide. Uh, so it's, it's a wonderful resource. So maybe we can continue the discussion at the end. We started seven minutes early and we just caught up. So we're back on track. We use that as seven minutes.